everyone welcome back to the next video in this video we will be looking into the next release of react native which is react native 74 so i'll just go through the documentation on what all new changes they have made so they have uh, mentioned about yoga 3.0 new architecture bridgeless by default new architecture bashed on layout updates and yarn 3 for new projects and there are some breaking changes as well so if you see the yoga 3.0 there are some new layout behaviors like react native 0.74 includes yoga 3.0 the newest version of our layout engine yoga 3.0 improves layout by making styling more predictable and supports rendering components written for the web react native continues to intentionally preserve some incorrect layouts behaviors where fixing them was found to affect a significant number of real world components layout conformance will be able to configure more granularly in future versions of react native so here they have given something like react native previously flipped left right and start and edges when dealing with margin padding or border set on a row reverse container now behavior of this properties line up with the web code which previously relied on edges being inverted may need to update to continue rendering correctly so I have never used this row reverse thing like I am hearing it for the very first time so yeah if you are uh, using this be careful then there is support for align content space evenly like yoga 3.0 brings support for align content space evenly it distributes the lines in a multi-line flex container using evenly spaced gaps placed between the line and container edges then there is support for position static as well and it is only supported in the new architecture also i have noticed that yoga uh, the rendering uh, ui layer uh, for react native was not updated for a very long time like i'm at least happy they are making some new changes and fixing bugs uh, so yeah that's the good part then element marked as position static may not be offset and are considered when determining the containing block of an absolutely position element this allows positioning an element relative to an ancestor which it's not its uh, direct parent so yeah here you can see this uh, red color view is static whereas the green color view is position absolute so that's how it looks like now coming back to the new architecture bridgeless by default so in this release we are making bridgeless mode the default when the new architecture is enabled you can uh, learn more about how to switch to bridgeless as uh, the default in this post so if you see this post they have uh, made a big documentation on this as well so we'll come back to this to make the transition smoother we announced the interop layer to cover bridgeless and worked with several libraries to make sure they will work in bridgeless from day one bridgeless is not the only interop layer we worked on we improved the new renderer interop layers too the most exciting bit is now by default you don't need to specify the components that have go that have to go through it you can read more about it here okay update on the new renderer bridgeless by default uh, then finally if you want to learn more about you can find the documentation in the new architecture repo so previously it was part of the react native documentation but now they have moved the new architecture to github i'm not really sure why uh, they should have uh, kept it over there and mark say that this is still experimental or something and when the new architecture becomes the default this information will be incorporated in the into react native dot dev new architecture bashed on layout updates okay so state updates in layout callbacks are now bashed previously each state update in the layout would result in a new render component okay so if there are two states and if you are trying to update both of the states simultaneously then it would bash those two states together so this change is expected behavior and react and allows for less re-renders this may break code so yeah you might have to check if this breaks your code or not now i have done a lot of uh, tutorials on the new architecture but in those tutorials bridgeless mode was not enabled or bridgeless mode was introduced from react native 73 and i have been doing new architecture i think from react native 70 or something like that 
so i'll so i will request you all if you have time or if you are trying to do a tutorial uh, go through uh, like just enable new architecture uh, that part remains the same once you enable the new architecture bridgeless mode will be enabled by default okay and i'll come back to that bridgeless documentation also if you see over here they have mentioned so here uh, if you run your app you should see something like this in log bridgeless mode is enabled uh, co concurrent root fabric is true so once you enable the new architecture bridgeless mode also gets enabled for react native 74 then you can try my tutorial if something breaks do let me know in the comments for that particular video and i'll try to uh, try my best to update that uh, video to, with the new bridgeless mode as well because i do feel that some of the apis even though i was using new architecture i do have a feeling that some of the apis which i was using might be from the old architecture uh, okay then this is this then yarn 3 for the new projects yarn 3 is now the default javascript package manager for new projects initialized with react native cli yeah that's fine then uh, the minimum hdk of android it is android 6 so they have updated the min hdk to 23 there is app size reduction as well so they are saying that almost 13 percent smaller size like almost 4 mb of size you would save then prop types have been deprecated so they have uh, completely removed this which i think is a good thing uh, then api changes to push notification ios i was never even aware that there is this library called push notification ios but yeah and in the next release we are planning to remove this library relocating it out of react native core and uh, moving it to the community package then api changes so this did you register user notification setting callback on i am not even sure what this is i think this is some objective c plus plus code which i don't think i have uh, really used it so yeah if you are using it do go through this as well then there are some other breaking changes like make start and in styles always refer to writing direction removal of gsi module from fabric ui manager provider this api was unused in open source use turbo modules instead and if you go they might be yeah they redirect to the turbo module docs deprecate ui manager module show pop-up menu and this has been moved to react native pop-up menu android npm package then delete config file config key okay change how bundle url is handled okay i don't think we need to worry about all this and there is a known issue of uh, in ios edge case when using multiple windows when the main window is inactive the system tries to present a dialog the dialog is not presented in the right position of the screen a fix is coming in uh, this okay and it will ship in react in uh, 0.1 version of 74 then you, this is how you can upgrade it now if we come back to this so this is the turbo model documentation if you want to refer to the entire documentation of new architecture you can go to this particular link and it has everything turbo modules fabric uh, fabric native turbo modules how to enable it for your apps then an update on the new renderer interop layer uh, okay during the roll of, of react native we worked hard to ma make sure that the most popular component libraries are compatible with the new architecture and the bridgeless flawlessly in order to achieve this we improved the new interop layers adding support to future releases automatic interop layer interop layers are now automatically enabled when you turn on the new architecture you can remove the unstable react legacy okay i was never even using this so i'm not sure what this is to turn on the new architecture yeah we already know in this setup components you that are using will have to go through the interop layer and they will be rendered in the new renderer automatically <coughs> so there is something called old renderer like the old architecture and they have created an interop layer so if you are a library maintainer with the help of this interop layer you can make uh, your library compatible with both old architecture as well as the new architecture and top of making the interop layer automatic we push some other improvements adding support for some missing apis and lookup mechanisms 
then for android add support for add ui block apis which were not available this enable the migration of critical open source libraries such as react native view shot which now fully supports new architecture <coughs> added support to look up view manager with RC rct prefix also on android fixed a bug that to make the interop layer crash when an event was emitted too early in the component life cycle okay next coming back to bridgeless mode as we roll out the new architecture of react native in open source we want to share an update on bridgeless mode starting from 74 bridgeless will be enabled by default when new architecture is enabled so we don't have to do extra bit of step for enabling bridgeless just enable new architecture new architecture still remains experimental and you need to explicitly enable it in your application this marks an important milestone for react native as bridgeless was the last piece of the new architecture and we managed to open source it in react native 73 but it is still it was still behind a flag now we removed that flag it will be enabled by default when the new architecture is enabled now you can experience the new architecture at full power in react native we need to iron out uh, the latest details so please open an issue on react native every time you find something that is not working in the new architecture how to enable it and what does it mean okay we have already seen it this is how you will see when you run your app this should you should see this inside your metro bundler metro bundler if you have enabled the new architecture what to, uh, to expect your app should run uh, seamlessly in bridgeless mode provided that it was running with the old architecture before spend a lot of time working on the interop layer and bringing on the bridge api you might have used to might have used to bridgeless mode can read more about it in the backward compatibility section however we know there still still might be some missing apis and some rough edges that we need to iron out before starting the new architecture is the new default we need your help whenever you find something that does not work please submit an issue okay we are prioritizing work on new architecture and those bugs have the hash priority for us even for new architecture you can opt out of bridgeless if you want to so yeah this is what they have specified so you just have to add this bridgeless enabled equal to false for android and for ios you will have to add this but don't do don't do it like if you are using new architecture you should be using bridgeless mode and then you can verify it something like this okay backwards compatibility to ensure projects we migrate smoothly to the new architecture and to bridgeless we dedicated a lot of time to interoperability and backward compatibility the interop status as of react we are working on interop layers and backward compatibility way back even before react native 73 as a refresher we introduced the new interop new renderer interop layer and react we introduce legacy mode no okay you can obtain yeah and i think these are all the apis uh, which have been moved to the new architecture as well to improve backward compatibility we also brought back the get catalyst instance method of react context this method now returns a bridgeless catalyst instance which supports the following method so yeah uh, so yeah these are all these changes for react natives uh, 74 version thank you for watching